Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would ask you to move in just a little closer, if you would, please, so that you'll be able to hear the speakers better, and we won't have so much interference from uh, Interstate 81. Watch, watch, watch the line. Okay. The story of the citizen soldier in Pennsylvania begins with the French and Indian War and before. Prior to the French and Indian War, there were a number of small militia groups around to give protection from marauding Indians. After the defeat of General Edward Braddock's army at the Battle of the Monongahela, the Indians out of the Fort Duquesne area uh, of the forks of the, of the Ohio River in what is now Pittsburgh went wild, spread out all across Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Western Virginia, marauding, burning homes and villages, small settlements, killing men and boys of combat age, capturing women and children, destroying livestock, crops, and in general uh, making a lot of mayhem. At the height of all this, they actually got within a half a day's march of Philadelphia in the upper reaches of Berks County known as the Alamangle, which was a heavily settled, uh, German settled area. The settlers there who survived these raids went to Conrad Weiser, whose home was at Wommelsdorf, and pleaded for him to do something. Conrad Weiser went to Benjamin Franklin and said something has to be done about this. We need a standing paid professional army. Franklin had been trying to establish militias in a professional manner for several years, and the Quaker Board of Commissioners that governed Pennsylvania, being pacifists, weren't too wild about that idea. Well, after the raids in the Alamangle were creating so much havoc, and Franklin and Weiser were able to convince the Board of Commissioners that they may be next, since these people, these savages, were only a half a day's march away, that the commissioners did authorize an army, a standing paid professional army of Pennsylvanians. This was in 1756. There were three battalions established. The first battalion was to be commanded by Colonel Weiser, and that was to be headquartered at Wommelsdorf. He was responsible for a string of 10 forts along the Blue Mountain chain from approximately Allentown, PA today to north of Harrisburg at Fort Hunter. <coughs> Weiser chose for his uniform the red-faced, crimson-faced, green uniform you see with my two guards here. The second battalion was coloneled by Conrad Weiser, I'm sorry, John Armstrong of Carlisle. Colonel Armstrong was responsible for four forts west of the Susquehanna River, Fort Littleton and Fort Loudon, which exist today as villages, <laughs> Fort Granville, which is where Lewistown, PA is today, and Fort Shirley, which was in the village of what is now Shirleysburg, about 20 miles to the south of Huntington, PA. Fort Shirley was really a stockaded trading post belonging to George Crowan, an Indian trader, sometimes called Crowan's Fort. The 3rd Battalion, as uh, Mr. Lynch told you, was specifically put together for the Susquehanna Expedition. Its sole job was to build and garrison Fort Augusta at the forks of the Susquehanna River at what is today Sunbury. It gathered, formed at Fort Hunter, moved upriver, and built Halifax, Fort Halifax, which is where the town of Halifax is today, crossed over the river and moved on up to uh, Shamokin, crossed over the uh, river there and came across two miles below where the fort was built, moved on up and built its fort. Fort Augusta was the largest and longest lived of all the Pennsylvania provincial forts built in 1756 and dismantled in 1794. It served both the French and Indian War and the Revolution and the interwar period it was mainly used as an Indian trading post. 
Settlers began to come in there in 1772. The city of Sunbury was chartered. Now in 1758, General John Forbes was sent here by the King, George II of England, to do what Braddock had failed to do. He put together an army of about 7,000 people that consisted of all three Pennsylvania battalions, the uh, uh, Maryland forces, I believe two companies of them, Beals and Dagworthy's. Dagworthy's is represented over here next to us today. There was uh, companies and regiments from Virginia and the Royal American Regiment known as uh, Royal Americans, the 60th Regiment of Foot. Then there was Sir Archibald Montgomery's 77th Highland Regiment, all three companies, his light infantry, his regulars, known as a hat company, and his grenadiers. They formed here. The armies from Maryland and Virginia came to Fort Cumberland, and both armies from here and there moved to Fort, uh, to Bedford, built Fort Bedford and moved on west. This building is a way station, one that was described by Colonel Henry Bouquet in his uh, papers as to uh, what he needed, what he required as a uh, place to uh, bring supplies, rest horses and men, bullocks, Conestoga wagons, and then moved on to the next station as they were needed. They went up over the Laurel Hill, across the Laurel Highlands, and down in, terminating at uh, Fort Ligonier. After Fort Frederick, I'm sorry, after Fort uh, Duquesne fell and Fort Pitt was built, this was a very important part of the supply chain. These soldiers did a lot more than fight. They had to get the logistical supplies they needed and, and set up their, their lines and defend them. These stations were operated by a sergeant's guard of 12 men under the supervision of a sergeant. They raised a subsistence garden, a sample of which you see behind you, and they had a well. The cistern well over here is a hole in the ground which is lined with rock containing approximately eight feet of water right now, uh, maybe a little more after last night's rains. That water was used to water the garden in the uh, dry season and to water the horses and the bullock that were in pasture. The men drank water from a spring or a clean stream. They did not drink the uh, stagnant water in a cistern well. They'd get very sick. These soldiers made sure that supplies got to where they were needed on Forbes Road and at Fort Pitt as it was being built. Today's National Guard, Pennsylvania National Guard, traces its roots right back to that particular army from Pennsylvania. The citizen soldiers that were members of the Pennsylvania Regiment of Foot came from every walk of life. They were heavily German, quite a number of Scotch-Irish Presbyterians, and just about every immigrant that was coming into this colony at that time were these colonies you would find in this provincial army. Every trade, carpenters, masons, cabinet makers, cooks, farmers, bakers, locksmiths, physicians, chaplains, you'd find them all. They joined the army for a number of reasons, ranging from defending property that they had searching for loved ones that had been taken by Indian raids as a way to survive themselves. They were paid. They were fed. Quite often their families came along because when dad left the farm, mother and the kids had to come along too. So you had women and you had children. Camp followers, these were called. They weren't along just for the ride. They had jobs to do and they were paid for it. Officers would hire the ladies to do their wash, to do their mending, take care of their equipment. They would be paid by the officer out of his own pocket. The children went to school, taught by a learned sergeant. They had jobs to do. A soldier received a full ration of food. A woman received a half ration and the children received a quarter ration apiece. If 
they did their work. You don't work, you don't eat. And that's where that came from. The citizen soldier today comes from all walks of life. <coughs> we know that. And they had their starts back here in 1756 and before that. That's why we are an army of citizen soldiers. I want to thank you very much for coming to AHEC for the Army Heritage Days. I hope you enjoy your stay. There are a number of fantastic exhibits around here. Make sure you go. You're welcome to come through the way station here. We have people inside and here outside who will answer your questions gladly. So again, thank you for coming. And if you have questions, don't be shy. Ask somebody. Thank you very much.